Welcome to the Kendi and Rabo podcast, sponsored by Anderson's Bar and Grill and the Blind Tiger Bar. We just go for it then, so please, Brendan, are you on the oak or not? Yes. He was flat out messing with his fucking playing now background elevator music. He's there. Okay, no white camera this week, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Why is there no white camera this week? Oh, because there's someone in the house. Switch it over to Derek. Yay! Oh my god, it looks like he's coming in from a different feed. That just looked like he's in the same room at all, from what I can see. He is in the same room as, as us, and he's drinking a cocktail with us, which we'll get to first, ladies and gentlemen. We're drinking cocktails from the Blind Tiger. Ray, what am I drinking again? Uh, oh, feck. A breeze something? A, a, a breeze berry. A breeze, breeze berry. A ber- and it's unbelievable. I haven't tasted <laughs> yet, but I can guarantee it is. Mmm. <laughs> You're straight from the cocktail club at the Blind Tiger. What are you drinking, Derek Sunshine? Straight from the cow's tit. <laughs> martini. A porn star martini. Porn star martini. Raymond. I don't know the name of it. You're drinking a gooseberry brudge. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that anyway. There's so many cocktails to choose from. Half time, we don't even know what we're drinking. Big Fair- shout out to Johnny, who um, facilitated the order this evening from his home. Oh, lovely. I rang him. He was at home. Did you hear the crack with Johnny? Um, he <laughs> he went out drinking Sunday night. Oh, and, yeah. And uh, he bought a pool table. He did. <laughs> 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 but it's not like he went into a shop and bought it. He went no. online and ordered it in Argos. Yeah, he said the things you order with your, with your drug clack. Yeah. It you know? reminded me of that story of someone I won't name, but someone we know who gave up drinking because mm. he got so drunk he bought a speedboat and he did. <laughs> He bought a speedboat. I can't email. tell you the name, but he actually he gave. Oh, he hasn't drank in about ten years. Where is he, he from? He bought a speed. That's common. He oh. bought a speedboat on eBay, like, and he he gave up a uh, drink because of it. <laughs> he woke up and he had ten grand, <laughs> ten grand down, living in Roscommon with the fucking speedboat. Jesus, uh, yeah, landlocked county. <laughs> 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 landlocked, man. <laughs> Jesus, he gets some pace in those lakes. I, I'd say no, but I think he sold the speedboat. Do I haven't ever, seen him with it. I bought guns. One morning. What? Was, uh, what do you mean? Guns. Real guns? Yeah, well, yeah. With the firing pins taken out. What, what do you mean? We were down in Killarney. This was now with a band called White Water, right? You know you know White Water, you're familiar with them? Yes, I do. Yeah, well, White Water were playing in Killarney, and it was crack to be had, and it was drink had. And then the following morning, myself and Punk Paul, who used to be Rodian for... The best know, name Punk ever. Paul, yeah. Punk, Punk Paul. Punk Paul. Yeah, Why'd big, you call him that? Well, because he had a foot in <laughs> Flying in to explain him why. Because he had a big mohawk. Right. He, he, was, right. he was a punk. He was a punk all how the time. Long, how long was he a punk for? So, was he a punk in school? <laughs> no. Actually, it's a really interesting story. What? I was living in Lucan, right? right? Uh, myself and Alex Dylan Nolan. He right. couldn't make up my, his mind which name he had. He wasn't sure he was an Alex or he was a Dylan. Everybody was really confused about or what he was calling. from a modern family, right? Like, don't be so discriminatory. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Punk Paul, anyway, who was just Paul at the time, he moved in and he was wearing like a nice Nike black jacket and some flare jeans because okay. Kerrang was all the rage at the time. Flare jeans are back too, but yeah, and young he had ones. loads of gel in the hair and he was a fine looking man. Right. But then all of a sudden he goes into the punk because we watched Kerrang all the time and he got into the punk and he started dressing like a punk. No way. And then he became Punk Paul. Some 41 job. Yeah. Was he watching job. that kind of stuff? He was from Westmead. Right. And I ruined him. <laughs> <laughs> so he was a normal gentleman. <laughs> yeah. Nike, right? Nike jacket. Maybe a drop of Reebok. Yeah, oh, yeah. Adidas shoe? Yes. You're talking Actually, the classics. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This lad was a normal... He had everything going for him. You introduced him. You said, come in no. here, we're watching a bit of television. And all of a sudden, cause I'm what? in too deep. And he had a mohawk. Or yeah. Ramstein. And the yes. Nine, nine Inch That's, Nails yeah. sleeveless T-shirt. Yeah. He want to hang up the brill cream now. Enough yeah. is enough. Britches. There'll be a lot of britches in it. A lot of britches in Banana Man. <laughs> oh, no. Sorry. In the, the thing. Oh, yeah. And why were we talking about Punk Paul? Oh, uh, we were down in Killarney. Yeah. And I was ho- still drunk from the night before. And we went down, and I don't know, do you know, you know Killarney. As you walk down from McSorley, sure. there's a little, um, one of them Irish shops that sells fish and tackle, uh, ornaments and uh, CDs. guns. <laughs> and CDs as well. But they're decommissioned guns. Okay. So I seen this lovely AK-47 hanging on the wall. Like proper Kalashnikov jobby. Right. You're not in the fucking USSR now. But like, it was what the it hell? decommissioned. The firing pin was taken out of it. Okay. It was only 200 euro. See, we're getting back into my... 200 euro for a paperweight. <laughs> I, no, do you know what, Ray? We, we've dabbled into this. We've dabbled into this a little bit over the last couple of weeks, but the stories you're telling lately are so extravagant. You spent 200 quid on a decommissioned... For Paul. For Paul. Because <laughs> he loved it. And I said, I get that for you now. 
<laughs> but then I I fell left out. All that was left in was a um a, what you call a nine millimeter Glock. A wee pistol. A wee pistol. So yeah. I got the nine millimeter Glock, and we're standing there. And we had the two of them got them in a brown paper bag, and everything was great. And then, Is <laughs> then that I how thought they was, come? what. Well, that's Thinking what she put them into, like, obviously for us to carry them back to the hotel. What sort of shop was it? It was an ornament shop with the sell CDs and, oh, and, and yeah. fishing tackle. And tell me this now. Mm. Yeah. You said the, the smoking pill was taken out of it. What was it taken the out of The firing pin. The firing pin so, was taken, but could you get another fire... Could I go on to Amazon now, Jeff Bezos and the boys? I think they put a drop of lead in it or something and blocked it up. So you, you could go to a D-ledger, he could sort Jeez, it out. Jeez, you that. could rob a post office with it. But this is what we did. Easy, <laughs> rob a, You could rob a post office. You wave one of them at me, I'm giving you yeah. the money nine times out of ten. <laughs> But this is what we did. They also sold balaclavas in this ornament shop, oh, right? So we bought a pair of balaclavas. This wasn't, Ray, this is a back street shit now that you're doing. No, I'm not it's talking not. about this the This was a, this was a, this was a side was street in Killarney. It's no back street shit. That back to the hotel, we went up the stairs with the Gleshnikov, the Glock, and the two balaclavas, burst into the hotel room. The lads were asleep and scared the living shite out of them. <laughs> <laughs> but you could easily, that's such a good point, though. You could easily rob. Like, people have robbed post offices with BB guns and shit, yeah. like. We simulated a robbery then. Okay. So we went downstairs, and, and uh, the ones behind the bar were having great crack the fact we bought the guns. And then, <laughs> then we said, have you the money bags there? You know, the ones you get the change in. And they yeah. said, yes, we do. And I said, let's fill it full of paper, newspaper. And myself and Paul will run out of the pub. This is 12 one o'clock of a Tuesday afternoon. Let's Expensive run out of the pub. Prank, this. <laughs> Let's run out of the pub with the guns, with the balaclavas on, with the money bags, and run belt up the street. And, and did you? And Joey Kendi stood, your brother stood across the road and filmed it. <laughs> I don't know where that video is. Is there a video of that still? I wonder. I don't know where it is. If it's out there, let, it's a bit like Chris O'Dowd interview. What were you? <laughs> no, were you expecting when they said money bags that you'd get the actual ones from the films that have a big dollar the sign on them? Oh, it had a euro yeah, sign on them. The Looney Tune ones, yeah. yeah. What I, were you going to say, D? I can't remember. You, <laughs> you, you distract me with Looney Tunes. <laughs> and then you walk off the side of a cliff and you, it gives you, you... Yeah. It takes time before you fall. You look down and then you look up and you fall. <laughs> and you have those money bags. And then when you die then at the bottom of the cliff, you, you, a ghost comes out of your body. A ghost yeah. comes out, yeah. And he goes up into the sky yeah. then as well. And not yeah. before he looks thick about, uh, at the fact that he yeah. died. And he plays a little violin and yeah. he's gone he up then as well. This ropes. is all real life as well, by it's the way. This, science. This re science, Ray. Google science and tell me what comes up. What we He's were worried about, though, was the fact that if someone had actually reported us as having robbed McSarley's in Killarney, we could have been arrested. Yeah, which they should have, like, or the, shot the by the guard. There wasn't an armed unit at the time, but no. no. I actually saw the armed unit in Sligo the other day, right? Did you? Right? They were driving through town, Audi, Q4. Oh, yeah, they're right? in nice York. Do you know them, York? Mm. Woo! Not very inconspicuous, though, because one, it's Audi Q4 inside in Sligo, which is a wonderful car to be driving, also, that's still covered in the Garda stuff and all that. Like, yeah. it is armed response, but it's not undercover armed response. Mm. The book inside in it now, and I want to know because I've seen a lot of Irish guards in my time, right? Some of them, the hat's nearly either too big for them or way too small for them, based on their weight and age. They don't look like this gentleman I saw. He looked like he was from the FBI. Mm -hmm. Bald head, right? Right. Sunglasses, the cool sunglasses that I definitely wouldn't wear because they're out of style, but they're still in style, and ripped as a bull okay. inside what in the front. Yeah. I had never seen... <laughs> What? What did you say? I can't, I can't, I have to cut it out. <laughs> oh, we're back to this. He was ripped as a bull and, a wear, and he named all the clothes he wore. <laughs> he, had a cute li he had a cute little pants on. <laughs> and anyway, I'd never seen our response around Sligo before is the point. Anyway, let's move on to what we're supposed to be talking about. The one thing I want to ask Derek in the show is to explain to people why we, Ray, yeah. Say Luke's music fashions and Carmel's painting fashions and all that kind of stuff because that was actually taken from Derek. Derek, yeah, um, I can't explain it. <laughs> uh, it's great to be great to have you on board. Oh, jeez, lads, it's all changed. <laughs> yeah, sure, it's all changed. I'm it. absolutely blinded. <laughs> <laughs> Every By the time light. I look out at Brendan, I get. Blast in the eye. I look at you. I get blast. I'm just looking yeah, at the ground. It's a full weekend job in um, here, man. Blind by the lights. Yeah, it's it's full full security <laughs> system. <laughs> um, but fair play, and your name's gotten unmercifully long. Why? At the tremendous event center and all. That's the... Andersons. We did not come up with that. They want to play. call it contractual. You've come, you've come along. They want to call it Anderson. When was the last time you were on? A last year. Summer. Yeah, but yeah. you weren't even on. You were. Were you? I Can't thought we rang remember. you. You were stuck in Glass Nevin with a fella. Oh, there was one or two after. <laughs> <laughs> there was right, one or two. Are. There was one or two after that. Oh, was there? Yeah. Did we actually film with you then after that? There, but we didn't film because oh, film yeah. was only coming recently. <laughs> in, in the world, yeah, well, for you. <laughs> Jesus. But Christ. anyway, go on. So right, 
I, I was trying to explain to people that it's Daruk oh. that came up with the music fashions, right? But you did come up with music fashions because no. it came from Nicola's hair fashions. No, it <laughs> Not my Nicola, different Nicola. No, it was a lad I went to school with a very good friend of mine called Daniel Malone. And Daniel Malone's granny had a, what, a hairdresser. A hair fashions. <laughs> and <laughs> when we were younger, the phone, it was a small, it was in the front room of the house, a mm-hmm. small enough business, but she was very busy. Mm-hmm. But one every time someone would ring when she was cutting hair, yeah. Daniel had to answer the phone. What age is he? He was a 10, 11. Okay. But he developed this thing he'd say that would make both of us die laughing. So he'd, <laughs> he'd run down and he'd say like, hello, <laughs> Friday's hair fashion. <laughs> And that's where, that's where I get But like we'd, I'd be up to the top of the stairs looking down at him going. <laughs> and then when, when Nicholas started ma- messing around with nail business here, Derek said, please call it Nicholas Nail Fashion. Nicholas <laughs> Nail Fashion. Yeah. And now we called our episode last week Carmel's Painting Fashion. Yeah, yeah because is, it's the latest in fashion. Fashion yeah. is the latest. Yeah. yeah, it's the latest thing. And yeah. she is the latest painter. Did she take to it or not? Oh, she's, yeah, she got the Berlingo there on Tuesday. Did she? Yeah, yeah. Woo! Lovely 2011 Berlingo. That's unbelievable. Yeah, she went, you know, she spent a few pounds on it. I, I should go into business with her then because I was the one who gave her that idea. Like you, well, look at you could talk. To I'm her. like her, Brendan Tierney. Yeah, she did actually text and say fair, something about it. Wait, look at the message. Oh, now. read <laughs> out Carol's messages. <laughs> Woo! Oh, she's very funny. And read brilliant. it out, Ray, man. Read it out loud uh, and proud. Right, okay. <clears throat> Thanks for the vote of confidence on the painting. Nice of Mark to offer me a job. Hope decoration is going well for you. Fairly bright eyed with color white. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I uh, said, thought you'd enjoy the mention. Hope you even got the episode named after you said. She said, looked at dad's iPad and said, hope this is a good review. Oh, it is a good review, though. Yep. But that's the thing because people are looking for people in that kind of labour and world now, Raymond. Yep. And I think Carmel would be a shoe in to be going around painting houses around Mayo and the greater Sligo area. Do you want the rest of the update from Carmel? Please. I said, um, I said, hope you're having a nice weekend. I said to her. Yeah. And she said, Marie here and found um, week rough supervising. Marie found the week rough supervising, supervising yeah. Exams. On exams. Probably. Yes. Yeah. Or, presu- or not just supervising them, like. <laughs> <laughs> you could have been supervising the mother and father, right? Marie's yeah. finding it tough now looking at the two of us. We're running around the house and we're going up the field. We're not sleeping. Emma <laughs> <laughs> well, has to be fed six times. She can't fucking keep up with us. You have to hand it to her for putting in the work, though, with the family, you know? I'm up at half four every morning. <laughs> Making lunches yeah. and breakfasts and dinners and trying to keep them fed and watered. Um, Dad bringing in bales all dry. That was necessary information, though. Yeah. I can't be bringing in a wet bale. <laughs> you can't bring in wet bales, Mark. God, Jesus, you should know that. I just got a shock because I thought you were going to say all good. Like, <laughs> but it's such a good three update. Oh, they were dried up. Yeah. Just let me know. Oh, yeah, Dad bringing in bales all dry. <laughs> <laughs> Can we start saying that? All you dry. know, yeah. How was the How was the beach? All dry. All dry. All dry. Yeah. All dry no. Um, Murdy helping him too. Murdy's the. <laughs> Is that the Murdoch? Murdoch. Yeah. Murdoch. Yeah. Oh, right. that's a blast from the Kendi. That's brilliant. Yeah. He's, he's back. Here. He's, doing, do- he's doing a bit. All right, go on. Um, he he fakes a river one day. As Dad <laughs> helped him last time. That's oh, why so Marty it was, was a involved. Tit, tit for tat job, yeah, it's is kind it? of a country barter. So your outlet's happy enough. Oh, sorry, there's more. Sorry. Yeah, there's more. Yeah, just thanks. Thanks for the mention. Sounding good. The two of ye. So at, at, for at last now, you're getting a bit of credit. Lovely. Very natural, she said. Oh. Oh, yeah, lovely. and then she said, enjoy weekend. Enjoy weekend, yeah. I yeah. love that <laughs> mammy text where they, they skip out the words that they think we don't need these words. Superfluous words, words. they're yeah, not required. And so she said, "Have what she say, have good weekend, no, or something. Oh, yeah. Uh, really? Just like he... You're what? learning new words. <laughs> superfluous. Do you like superfluous? Yeah. I and like that. He didn't even bat an eyelid. Far no. from that, you were bored. Yeah, <laughs> shit. I <laughs> usually... Would think, oh, he made that up, like, but I better just go with it. Is what, that what you think? What does superfluous mean? It means additional that you don't require, you know? No like, unnecessary. Yeah, it's super to the pluff. You're after hugely <laughs> big time with me now. I'm going to have to put <laughs> a new word <laughs> Look at the way he's sitting and everything. His leg is shaking is down below. Big time and <laughs> out of it. I have no big words for you this week, have man. Have you not? Yeah. I do have mammy updates, though, if you want those instead. What's the last message your mother sent you? Oh... <laughs> Here we go. These are mammy and updates. Y- no, but you have to read out the last few messages. I will. No, I, yeah. will. I know, but she's going to be mortified. Well, no, if, they're, now. if they're confidential, don't go read them I know, No, 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 because they, them, like, it's not going to be that bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not your real man. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke, like. Yeah. So this is what's going on with my man. Ma- Mam's going to kill me for telling you all this stuff. Right. <laughs> okay. 
She last message she sent me was, was it last night or tonight that you said you would ring me back? <laughs> right? Oh man, talk but, about air in the dark. So I've been dirty working, washing. I've been working all the hours of all of the days yeah. that we live now. Mm-hmm. So that's what my life is now, right? Yeah. And my old lady rang me. Uh, maybe like a week ago mm-hmm. and I said ma'am I'll ring you back in 10 minutes and just call right I got yeah. that message from her yesterday right saying was it today or when were you supposed to ring me back did you feel guilty uh, she said she was waking up at night oh. in panics that I had she had done something wrong to me oh that's the kind of old lady she is like she thinks that like what did I do now like so she didn't sleep for a full week nearly thinking about me that I had upset her but what's on her mind at the moment right now and Derek will Maybe, maybe back this up, yeah. or maybe not. I don't know fully. Castlery has become the worldwide hub for walloping out vaccines. They're <laughs> literally giving them to dogs at the moment, like right. <laughs> they are smashing vaccines out of it. I don't know where they got them. They must have got them from Russia or something. Oh, Ballycastle had a but, surplus. Yeah, Ballycastle yeah. had a surplus since Castlery, and Clara. they're walloping the mouse. Clara, they got them mm, from load well, of fireworks, load of vaccines. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they got them up north or something. Yeah. But anyway, she. He's adamant that me and Nicola are getting vaccinated in Castlery, right? Oh, okay. Come down, come down to keep. So she says to me, Mark, they're walloping out vaccines. Will I put your name down? I said, Ma'am, I get it when it gets to me. Like, Doesn't you know, she work for the HSE? She works for the HSE. So is but she, she got double dosed already, Raymond. Is this this cronyism in this country again? No, it ain't no, no cronyism. It's um, that it got to the level now where Castlery, ha- they just all of a sudden the doctors are like, we've got to the age now. So whoever wants them, you might just get, on, just get on to us. Because yeah. It seems that way anyway. Yeah. It's, yeah, that's what it appears to be. I might be fucking hanging them out to dry, but you're hearing it here first. <laughs> anyway, the owl lady says to me, Kendi, they're walloping the mouse. I'm going to get you a nickel one. I said, ma'am, don't yet. It's grand. Like we get, get me one. We'll get them in Schlegel. You, do you not get dosed yet? No, but I... Well, what's double dose? That means you get four vaccines. No, you get the <laughs> double dose, man, is when you get both. Oh, the two, right? Yeah, the two and snips. you're full. You can do whatever you want. Lick faces. <laughs> the only thing is running around. Cas- Everyone in Casper is licking each other's faces around the place now, man. Honestly. <laughs> they're all hugging. Everyone... <laughs> You said it so dirtily. Oh, they're all hugging. There's nothing dirty about it. So, anyway, the old lady's bad for Kenzie and Nicholas to get vaccinated, right? Mm. I said, we'll wait till it's our turn in Sligo, ma'am. I said, my GP is here in Sligo now, anyway. Can I stop you there? Yeah. Can I say something I've been thinking since you told me that before this Come on. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. podcast? I reckon it's the fear of needles that you're not getting, you're not signing up to that. Am I right? Oh, yeah, you're fair He's scared of needles. Petrified of needles. So yeah. I reckon you're big time and you're poor mother there now. You're a shower because, <laughs> because you It is that, isn't it? You wear your you'd have to wear your brown underpants going in together. <laughs> <laughs> you would not. That is a little bit of it. I had to come clean. But she was fucking plaguing me, right? So I said, Ma'am, I'm not gonna get it, I'm gonna go psycho, whatever. I'll mm. wait for them to get to my age and psycho. Mm-hmm. She says, No bother, Mark, I hear you, right? <laughs> Consider it. We'll never talk about it again. <laughs> <Right? laughs> we'll never speak of this again. She rings me then the next day. Yeah. And she says, Ellie going down now to get hers. Well, I'm going to put your name down on it. I said, oh. ma'am, we had this conversation fucking yesterday. I'm, we'll get it here. She said, okay. Was Ellie going in as you? Ellie was going in to get it done. As you? No, She's not as me. your name down on us. Yeah, but they were going to say, can we get Mark and Nicklin? Oh, I said, okay. ma'am, she said, okay, no bother. I fucking hear you for the second time I hear you, Mark. <laughs> right? <laughs> Consider this conversation never happened at all. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She then said, I'm down here now, a couple of days later, going to put your name right down on the oak now. I said, ma'am, I fuck it. I had to come clean to her on the phone and say, ma'am, I'm I shit scared am English. shitting the back of me fucking trouser thinking yeah. about getting this vaccination. I want to get it in Sligo where Nicola can hold my hand inside in the place. Okay. Right? And ma'am laughed at me, the bitch. Right? <laughs> I hear they have someone in there to hold your hand. What? Yeah, but yeah. that's probably the person who's sticking the same needle into the same arm. <laughs> oh, no, just... Ma'am laughed and said, Nicola can't go away with you. You take ignorant good for that, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> she said, Nicola can't go in, but I'm still holding out the hope that she can. Because my problem with the vaccination is going to be this, right? I'm going to go in, petrified, right? Mm-hmm. I'll probably fade inside the room or something. I might die, right? Yeah. So I'm going to go in, and they're going to go, this fella's obviously terrified. What do you do with a terrified person? Treat him like a little baby child, yeah. right? And they're going to come up and be like, oh, do you play football, do you now? <laughs> well, oh, look, do you? you're going to be okay now. And I'm going to say, please just get it over and feckin' done with. Yeah. And that's my big worry. I'm not an anti-vaxxer, but I mightn't get it if I I think I might die getting it. Like, Would you be uh, anyways concerned about the fact, what age are you now? 29, is it? 29. 29. You're going to be in there with all the other 29-year-olds in the world. Yeah. Of your world, basically. Yes. Would you be scared that you'd be standing there looking at the ball and the ball looking like they're 23? And you're standing there like an outfella? 
Jesus, where did that come from? Whoa! That's, that's, he's not just swinging out of left field no, there all no, of a sudden. No, no, no. Uh, people have said that. I wore the, a white t shirt once, like, and man, he's it's, like. It's like really late. You, Jesus. Yeah, not, it's not many. Oh, you, you came um, at him there. He fucking swung. Go on, swing away again. <laughs> <laughs> people have said that when they go in to get their vaccine, they're obviously going in with the, their, their fellow age group. Yes. And that it really makes them realize how they either minded themselves so Jeez. far in life or not. So you're worried that I'll wait it out so long that I'll be in there getting it with the little babies. <laughs> no, you're not. Little... He's saying that you will look older than I'm your counterparts. I'm not saying. I'm saying that is he worried he might, might well, look if older? if he wasn't before, he is now. <laughs> Nothing to do. You're just leaving all the panic on me now at the moment. <laughs> like. So now he's going to be really like self-conscious yeah. on top of having the fear of fake needles. I can't panic any more than a panic in Imagine already, if like. you were sitting in there, right? Someone sitting beside you goes, yeah. fucking size of you. <laughs> Jesus, you're a tough look at. <laughs> but that's what's going to happen. I'm going to wait it out so long that I'll be getting it with 21 year olds. What's the cutoff point for vaccinations? I don't think there is one. Like, no, well, the they're not going to go and start t- doing it to children now, are they? I don't think so. No, they're going to cut it off at us. Like, is that the idea? Like, 18 or no, 16, 18. 18, 18 yeah, so. we're the last bit of schmutz. Like, Did you hear about the Delta variant? Variant, variant, yeah, variant. Can, can we talk about the Delta variant? Yeah, it's because basically a cold. Is this? Yeah, apparently. Runny nose, sore throat, and a headache. All right. What's going to happen now is not... our podcast is now going to have a disclaimer on it that says <laughs> COVID-19, get on to hit. You know that shit in That's... Facebook? Oh, yeah, you're right, probably. Also, do you know why they call it the Delta variant? Because they didn't like the other name. No, because you can't call it the Indian variant because it's discriminatory. <laughs> what are you laughing at? That's the truth. That's, Jesus that's true as there's a God. What about COVID-19 and Corona? They didn't call it the Wuhan job. <laughs> yeah, but the Wuhan job... <laughs> I'm thinking of my mother here. She says, don't be laughing so much at the podcast. I'm going to stop. Try and put it back. Well, that's very good, Derek. I'm crying. I mean that. (laughs) (laughs) My name is Derek Gorham. It's back. My name is Derek Gorham. What are we saying before that? I did not mean... No, so Trump uh, Trump called the China virus for a year and a half. And yeah, now, he missed his rick there, didn't he? Yeah, but now they're obviously <laughs> going, all right, we can't be calling it after every country. Like, But I was saying, the stuff is going to get more local and local and local. Did I say this already, G? It's going to get more and more local. We're going to be saying, Jesus Christ, the Chapter 3 vi- variant. No, it's very strong, lads. You want to be careful. Don't go down that yeah, road. Like, true, true. You know? But if you're telling me that the Delta one that we're all worried about now, when Ray said it, no, Dr. Said Ray it. McAndrew here, That's right? PhD, a pretty huge... <laughs> right? He said that the Delta variant is only a cold. So I'll let you go out and get it. Is all that I'd say. Yeah, you, yeah. According to Ray, I mean, you'll all be sad. Yeah, like, according to Ray, oh, go get the Delta yeah. virus. Not going to do that yeah, to you. Celebrate that Del- 90th. Thanks, Ray, for that. <laughs> 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 oh, lads. Next steak. Mm. <sighs> right. Mm. Okay, we better, we better settle again, maybe, or something. Mm-hmm. And this drink is lovely. Mm. It is nice. Yeah. Comes from a little bar called the Blind Tiger. Yeah, we do we tell you about that? <laughs> no, yeah, the Blind Tiger bar, yeah, they do cocktails and all that kind know, of stuff. Do you know what, Eric, you normally have a kind of a things that bothered you over the last while listening yeah. to us? You must have a full year built up You must up have now. a full year or you yeah. stopped listening. <laughs> do you think we got too big for our boots? <laughs> the, the billboard. Oh, <laughs> you think that was a bad call? There's a very short window looking at it. So because it's it, it came up in spring and summer, Yeah. The foliage mm-hmm. is... <laughs> Is up, so there's a tree. Oh, yeah. th- that was cut back at the couple, time. Yeah, at the time. But since I started coming up, it's been... There's uh, a lot of foliage you're, you're worried foliage. about. Yeah, mm. so there's some coverage uh, above on top yeah, of this. Yeah, but it, you know, it really it really is good. I like the tagline, and you can read it from the road. Um, Thank you. What else would I say? Come here, do you think that since the last time that you've seen me and Ray, that we have grown, a podcast has grown, or is it the same on shite like Or have we just grown ourselves? Um, we've certainly grown We've gotten bigger lad, you're, you're being very <laughs> fucking needy here I'm not going to lie <laughs> Jesus what a question You're basically asking me What have we improved? No but Derek told me <laughs> Derek told me today, this? told me I lost weight today. You I did felt, lose weight you I felt marvellous yeah, to you myself well, You yeah. did You're wearing a white yeah. t-shirt It's not like you You no, never no, tell no, me you that have, you have. I'm no, telling you now Thank you man You already said that though Because Derek said it And apparently Apparently No I won't get into that Oh 
get into it. Come uh, you on. Have to, you pulled that out. You of can't no, pull I, that I've out. been meant to think differently of of the I suppose the topics of conversation me and you have been having. But go on. Uh, I, this is so, go on. Go for it then. Do you know? Um, I'm like, not judging you. Yeah, like earlier when Derek said the size of you. Yeah. Do you know? Mm-hmm. That's not great because you're not you're not overweight like. Oh, he's turning to turn now all of a sudden. Do you know, he? you're not overweight. You're not. You're not yeah. heavy, you know? You don't think I am actually heavy. So we shouldn't be saying things like the size of you or you big fat shite or any of that sort of stuff. <laughs> Has anyone <laughs> ever said you big fat shite? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm being very genuine and sincere here. I'm just saying that we shouldn't <laughs> say that. <laughs> <in a tweet. laughs> Has anyone ever called me a big fat shite? When did you call me a big fat shite? <laughs> That never happened. I don't, I don't, I don't think it fucking did. I don't think it did. Are you all calling me a big fat shite no, behind me back? No. <laughs> That's what it Look like. at, you're not, you're missing my point. I'm crying. That's it, this is going to be a big Patreon video of me crying. Oh. Just full on tears. <laughs> Like, I don't. I don't think anyone ever fucking said it about you. But <laughs> no one. I'm afraid. saying that. I was, no one ever said that about you. Yeah, I know. Right. I talk about it in jest as well because I gained a little bit of weight over the, the crack. Yeah, but you, yeah, lost, but you lost a fair whack of it now. Yeah, but I wasn't huge, like. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> no, like you're just. What I'm saying is we shouldn't be talking about it as much because, do you know? We're you not, should, you, this, know. this had the opposite fucking effect, right? It's the. It's the, the, the they were talked about fat shaming, <laughs> shat, fat shaming, and fat phobic. <laughs> Fat phobias and all this sort of crack, and I just I got I'm, I'm I know exactly I, what you're trying to say, Ray, but you're <laughs> trying to say let's not even bring that in because it doesn't matter. Like yeah, I, it's saying. just I don't think you put on that much weight to to warrant to have commenting you, on it. I think we all look unbelievable right now. That's right. I think we're in the prime of our life. Prime yeah. Of life. I think if the three of us had to go out now and box Floyd Mayweather, we box the jaw off. Yeah. I think I think we're all of that yeah. age. That I we think we should <laughs> we should stop putting each other down. No, absolutely, man. Yeah. We should put other people down with yeah. fists. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's what you're trying to get at. Uh, no, we're I'm, in the prime of your life. Yeah, you're trying to promote a bit of scrap. Let's promote no, a bit of scrap. I'm then. trying to promote a bit of body positivity and, and be Jeez. feeling good about I've yourself. I've never been more positive. If you punch me into the gut now, I won't feel nothing, man. Mm. And I, will, I back straight back into Joe. We, should, we could go around. What are you talking some, about? I know you got me all jazzed up now all of a sudden. You were fucking big time. You were going, come on, lads. We're into it. Right. And now I want to box the heads of people all of a sudden. You got my juices flowing. <laughs> <laughs> now. Let's switch gears here, right? Yeah. Let's go into fourth. All right, what's in fourth? You're on your summer holidays, Derek Lovey. I am. And From the cuds. You have been telling me of all these... Uh, again, it annoys me, okay? i got to bring this up, right? You keep telling me of all these wonderful plans that you have, and I want to watch Netflix. So what's that all about, like? What do you mean? What wonderful plans have you got? You keep telling me about all this stuff you're going to go. You're going to go surfing, you're going to go hiking, you're going to bike to work, you're going to go to Kilimanjaro, and I'm, <laughs> say, I'm, I'm probably going to watch The Wire. I actually started watching The Wire, and it's brilliant. Oh, right, you've that done as well, then. I can't <laughs> even do that. <laughs> Before you get into that, didn't you come up with a great idea for our sensei, Brendan, who was doing the cameras every evening? He's a driving instructor. That he could cycle to work. <laughs> yeah, he I could thought you should apply scheme. for the cycle to work scheme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hop on the bike yeah. there from the front door, from and the front then door, stop the in the park driveway. the car on the curb. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you go? Imagine trying to explain that one. That's, That's I brilliant. I was, I was in getting it a few weeks ago, and I thought, well, geez, isn't this great? And then I was thinking, I wonder who it isn't great for. <laughs> it's, it's an awful corrupt scheme. Yes, it is. And Anyone Ray, can get it. Don't. Yeah, Ray has blown that scheme wide open. I haven't. And you can go again. What? You can go yeah, again. You can go four years. You want. Yeah, four or five years. Yeah, I, said, I sold my bike to Shona. Shona. work. Right. No, wait, I'll run that again. I sold my bike to Trina and work. Right. So they did. I wanted to make sure I got that right now. It's very important to get a factually correct. Well, okay, I got Trina. It was, was Trina, just class. to make sure. Yeah, yeah. Trina. <laughs> Jesus, you're some operation. Yeah. <laughs> so, for everyone at home, right? <laughs> yeah, no, go on. Go you on, can tell them, them what You got the name wrong. Yeah. yeah. And Sorry, then, and Trina. As he got the name wrong, he just called it like a little switcheroo yeah. to come back around, and then he said the right name again. Yeah. And just to let you know, he called Trina Seamus. <laughs> That's what he actually did with the yeah. little glitch there. But, uh, Go on, anyway. Yeah, but I got my bike to work scheme, and then I just stopped. I stopped biking. I started driving. Yeah, eight hundred meters down the road. Yes, <laughs> not even eight hundred meters. But it rained. It constantly rained. Ray used to drive his little van, mm. not eight hundred meters, but it def- was eight hundred meters. Four hundred. About two yards. football pitches. About that. Yeah, about maybe a hundred and twelve stucco tables. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If we're judging in that About <laughs> What else can we do? What else can you well, do? It was 400 about dartboards. <laughs> <laughs> Way more than 400. 700 dartboards. <laughs> That's a couple of thousand dartboards. 2,000 dartboards. No, that much is dartboards. About three dartboards in a metre. 
Jesus. And if it was about eight hundred, sorry, I ain't getting kicked again. Go on, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, no I, I was looking at you there. Are you going to try and fucking do this now? Yeah. yeah. Oh, we are scraping. Anyway, what were you saying? So you bought it. No, but here's the thing: you bought that with, uh, with no intention of ever cycling it, but it was obviously all right to do. I that. cycled for a little while, but then I got wet. It was a lovely bike. It was a lovely bike. It's what did you job. guess? Mm. What? Yeah. Well, Why can't you say? No, I don't know. I, I, trek. Trek. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> did he get some kind I, of fucking... I, I, no, I, I, need a I needed a second. <laughs> if you get the cycle to work scheme, yeah. can you just get like a bike that you have at home that you do your exercise at as well? Does that count? No. no. I yes. read an interesting thing the last day about bikes. Go on. People, people shouldn't be cycling bikes. Bike right. people are not needed in this world. Oh, you're like George Hook all of a sudden. Brilliant. Go on. Jeez, man. Everything we've said, you've went against it. <laughs> no. <laughs> hasn't it? No, I'm saying, no, I'll, I'll come round. I'll come round. Right, sorry, I'll sorry, go out to Clooney and I'll come round. <laughs> you missed right? the swing here you now. You missed okay. the swing. Right. I read a little thing, and I won't remember most of it, but that's because that's me. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, if you buy a bike, right, and you're psyched in the whole time, you're not paying for fuel. Yeah. You're not paying for servicing. You're not paying for... You're not it paying is, tax. It's an economy versus the environment. A little, not not really, <laughs> but yeah. So you're not you're not you don't need insurance. You're not getting in accidents. You're be, you're staying healthy, so you don't need to go to the doctor as much. Okay. So effectively, you're you're putting loads of people out of jobs. So the the, the you know be because you're on the bike. Jesus Christ you know? of all my. So what Jesus. you're saying is drink pints and drive cars. Uh, you're better off putting a McDonald's into the into the town because then you're going to put a, you have a load of dentists, you have a load of doctors. Ray, I'm on board. Like. If you're telling me that we can eat McDonald's all the time and it'll keep people in their jobs, count me, count me in, man. I'll do my bit and make write a film about me in 15 years. Yeah, don't... don't the man who me. saved the economy by eating the whole out of a McDonald's for three don't years. Don't even start them in pedestrians. They pay nothing. What? They used to bike. You, you go to a bike shop and you Oh, you're bike. actually dead right. Yeah. Ignorant <laughs> walking around the place, man. I actually have... Do you know what? They cost us that money with Let's pedestrian crosses. Let's cut all the triathlons out then. These cycling, swimming, What's walking. Here, like, no, no, you're dead right. No, no. <laughs> Cut them out. No, no more triathlons, right? You have to drive everywhere in big, dirty cars and eight loads of shite. Yeah. Can we just... If, if can we the all world is going this? to work. If the world's going to continue the way we need it to continue and yeah. people are going to stay in their jobs. If we have any chance of getting the plastic bag back. Dave McWilliams, you can put that one now in a book, right? Hmm. Now, is there anything else that you want to get onto before we go on? You usually have a few bits, Ray. Um... I usually have a few bits. Yeah, not today, though. Not really. Are you not going to take your phone out today and show everyone how you work, run the podcast? No, no, no. Not at all. No, I kind of, uh, I took the criticism from last week on board. Right. And I said, I'm just not going to write anything No down way. This week. So you're, oh my God. So you're yeah. not going to write anything I'm down. here with nothing. Okay, well, do you want to hear about a little bit about my week then, a little bit? I suppose. Without telling you too much. Raymond, mm. three weeks ago, mm. what are you laughing at? Mind your own business. <laughs> <laughs> Three weeks ago, me and you had a conversation on this podcast About where you surprised me by saying, Fall Ireland have come out with guidelines. Oh, yeah. And guidelines are guidelines. They're not regulations. They're not law. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Some places in this town have taken that on board. I don't want to name them in case they don't want to be named. But it's great to be sponsored by Anderson's Tremendous Event Centre and Wonderful Food. Oh, yeah. Items. That's a weird place to bring that up. Okay. But yeah, yeah. Anderson's, what a great <laughs> spot that is. Talk yeah. about ratting. But, but Tremendous talk, crack. Oh, we're not ratting anything. No, no. That was different. Just, we gotta different. get the we gotta Segment. go on an ad break every now and again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but you're saying some venues in the town have put on a drop my live music. Yeah, so you're on about Anderson being a great spot and everything. Yeah. Event center. Anyway, beyond that, yeah. I some place decided to put on music, right? And Kendy said, right, no more than anyone on the Facebook who's standing up for whatever they need to be standing up for. I said, enough is enough, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> says I, right? <laughs> Manager gets on to Kendy, says, come down and do the music. I said, what about the guidelines? They said the guidelines come on in. Yeah. I went in and we had an unbelievable night of music. On Sunday night in a local spot. It wasn't nearly as good as Saturday night. Excuse myself then, so. Oh, All right. Wasn't like All right, okay. You were in there on Saturday night. We were there Saturday night. That right. was really, really good. We're not going to talk about who was playing there. Obviously. Huey Lowry. You don't need to tell me because now I have to rip him out of us. Yeah, you, but he... you called him out and I would say <laughs> Huey Lowry is a load of wallet, but I bet with that. Him. <laughs> you many, went there, that'll be. How many sad innovations did you actually get? Uh, they weren't on. There no, wasn't any. No, because they weren't allowed to stand up, man. They were told. How not many to did Huey get? Was it three? It was definitely three. Definitely three, yeah. There's definitely three standing ovations for Huey. <laughs> well, do you know what? <laughs> God bless you, Huey Lowry, that is all I'd say. Fair play to him. Mm. I had a belter of a night, Ray, inside in the place, right? And was it, it was it nice to be back? I don't think you did. <laughs> what? No, it's happening! Why is you people trying to tell you about nice things? So, there was quiet. a belter on Saturday night. Yeah, like, Saturday you night. Had, I played belter. Night. Actual belter. And people yeah. were like, she's a belter. Kendi's yeah. different from the rest. He played loads of great tunes and he always <laughs> does his best. 
Uh, yeah, that yeah. Was, that Huey was, yeah. played Sweet Caroline twice. He did. He and did. He ah, the here second though. one we, was better than. Yeah, but that's not you, fair. You can't double drop it, Sweet Caroline, man, because that's not fair. There's none written rules. Start with an end with. It's taking <laughs> taking risks when he's talking about touching hands and people have drink taken. Oh, because they might actually start touching hands. No, there was people touching hands. He took big risks then to pull them out of there. Okay, touch, okay so touch. Kendi was under the opinion, very <laughs> stupidly, obviously. Right, though, like I've learned since. <laughs> I am not top dog obviously I thought oh, I'm doing the fucking tunes in town fair play to me yeah. and you're actually telling me no 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 Kendi that is not true there's someone better out there doing it's it it's just you're also doing the tunes in town but there's there's a Saturday night act and then there's a Sunday night act I had such a bubble right <laughs> <laughs> of goodness I had such a bubble of goodness right yeah. until tu- from Sunday until Tuesday yeah. and you just got the biggest deal you could pop that thing right in front of me face I'm sure it was marvellous you burst the blue to my ear pretty much is what you just did to me there right <laughs> did you Our enjoy it by the way it was unbelievable, crack, Ray. We were lifting the place out of us. Yeah. Listen, though. How savage was it to be out and about again, though, right? Unbelievable. This is the second time that we've got to open up and go have a bit of crack. Mm. It's unreal, like, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. 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 It was Sean O'Reilly's birthday. Oh, yes, it was. I can't uh, believe we'd ever mentioned that That was yet. on Saturday night. Right. We kind of had booked two tables. A pair of tables, Yeah, some now, might say. there was a catch. Because when we rang... Um, to yeah, there was a catch. <laughs> we rang Anderson's Tremendous Event Centre, one of the food items. We said, we'd any chance of two tables for Saturday night. Hmm. To which they replied, no, we're booked out. No, well, And of course, they would be booked out. I would expect nothing less of them. And I said, is there any way for Sean O'Reilly, being Sean O'Reilly, you know? They said, well, look, we got a whole sc- stack of new tables in. If you'd like to put two of them together, you're more than welcome. So they said it's like Ikea job here, like... Yeah, build your own table. So you built your own table. Myself and Sean went down at four o'clock and we built two picnic tables. <laughs> two six-seater picnic tables. Seriously, yeah. I thought that photo that you put up was a piss take. No, like, it wasn't a piss take. I thought Sean, I rang Sean, I was up surfing, and I rang Sean and said, what are you at? He said, oh, I'm just putting together tables for tonight. <laughs> yeah. And I said, they wouldn't do it for you. And I thought he was, I thought he <laughs> no. was messing. Yeah. Hey, we, built no. our own, we built our own party tables. And did Sean O'Reilly enjoy his little birthday? Well, what I was going to say to you next was then, the guest list was troublesome. Yeah, you know, because it's tough he knew now. that it was only 12 you could have. Mm-hmm. Some people were disappointed. Well, some people were left out. Some yeah. people were left out. Yeah. You know? Brendan Tierney. Was Brendan one Tierney was left out. But I've said this about Brendan. It's awful. <laughs> right? Yeah. We always in the cameras for us now and everything. Yeah. But the worst thing about Brendan, and you have to explain it to him every time. Every time. Is that, sorry, Brendan, it's only for close friends like this too. You know what I mean? <laughs> the worst thing is, though, this is twice now it's happened that we've left Brendan out of a party. <laughs> and both times he sent us, you know that Pablo Escobar meme where he's just standing there looking at us? Yeah. Him? yeah. <laughs> Both nights he sent me a collection of pictures of him out in the back garden sitting on the trampoline looking off into the distance. <laughs> and I did you know. The problem is, Brendan, if he's listening out there at all, I don't yeah. know where he might be in the world. No, out in the hall. Is that we don't pick the party numbers. It's always no. for somebody else. No. When it comes to Kendi's birthday... You'll be there. Uh, when he might be. like, <laughs> Is he on the list for the wedding? I will see you. That'd be awkward. Ah, this is so awkward, man. We'll see. I don't know. Like Maybe if they let us up to 300 again. Because you're talking about close friends and then acquaintances, and it's awful awkward to have to say that to somebody. Yeah, yeah. You're only an acquaintance. I should never have to say that to anyone. But yeah, I was tight with the numbers uh, in that I was worried. I thought if, if more, he's over speculated basically. He invited 13 or 14 people. And I was kind of, you know, me being kind of, you know. Oh, well, you're, that's the one thing I've noticed lately, right? Mm. Ray is back in Ray modes now that there's events going on. I, Ah, look at you, man, the big smiley head. Yeah, you love being back in Ray mode again. There might be a small, dark part of me that that enjoys it. So much so, Ray, might I say, mm-hmm. that perhaps if COVID is completely eradicated, yeah. that you might be back in holiday organising mode. What? You know. That's going, cheeky enough, that's... You know, the it? old Ray of the old days when he'd organise an old holiday. With the black book. Oh! The black book. Yeah, that's where you're. Oh no, hold on a second now. Probably that that has different connotations. I'm not talking about something with a load of phone numbers in it. No, I'm talking about um those poly pocket jobs. Yeah. No, that's a toy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Little blonde one, you'd lose poly pocket. <laughs> What was the male? What was the male equivalent of it? But you, uh, no, no, none of those sets ever had the Polly Pocket. Cat I think it. I had the ladies one. I think I actually played with the woman's the one. The Kathleen yeah. and the fold out. Next yeah. thing you bait your one around the house. Is it <laughs> <laughs> not bad? Stop. <laughs> Is it bad that I, I mean that. at some of the happiest moments my toy enjoy in life was with Polly Pocket? Yeah, there was yeah. a yeah. belt yeah. of York. Had a few man. good times with it. Well, no, what? <laughs> Had a few what? Had you a few good times with it? <laughs> yeah, a few good times. Well, see, I, I had all the fo- I had the soldiers. Oh, Do you yeah. know you had the zero hour and the Manta Force and all that sort of stuff, you and know? And then he got a 
Ma- her Max Power magazine, and that was the end. Oh, that was it then, done. That was it. That's yeah. what he focused on. Around the age of 15. <laughs> but no, I did. I enjoyed the Polly Pocket. I enjoyed the fact the soldiers would be protecting the Polly Pocket house. Right. Do you know? They put a ring of soldiers around the Polly Pocket house. And they'd be minding then, Polly. What, what? They'd be minding Polly. And everything would be going great. And my sister Maria would plough in with the big face. <laughs> and she'd knock the whole thing all out. <laughs> and take the Polly Pocket back. Because it's her toy. So you didn't have a great time last weekend. We were home anyways. What you trying to tell us? <laughs> <laughs> but go on anyway. So you reckon you could take the Black Book out again? The Black Book was basically back in the day where you didn't have an app on your phone to store all the things. Mm-hmm. You'd have to print out all the all the booking things. So if you were going to, I don't know, if you're bringing three lads to Universal somewhere, yeah, you'd have but, to have all the tickets printed okay, out. Yeah. And I even, had all the tickets in the Black even Book. Even you now. You'd use a book now rather than that if we're going to fucking go hell for leather at something. Ah, uh, no. I'm, uh, probably we, gone, I'm gone modern now. No, but let's modern? bring it back, Ray. I'm modern. If COVID has taught us that, man, it's that the old school is the way to go. So let's organise a holiday when the COVID is over. Where and I want, you, I want you to bring the black book. I saw go somewhere, mid, let's go to Estonia and get fiddled with her. Or something mad. <laughs> like. <laughs> Would you go? I, there's, there's great talk now going to Turkey. Is there? Yeah. I was, I've been in Turkey twice. Have you? Have I you? Ne- yeah, I nearly died in Turkey. Close ever came to dying. What? Yeah. Tell so, us. what happened was, <laughs> Kenty, 14 year old, right? So, you tra- like for a man that says he doesn't like travel, you were all over the place. You were in Venice holding a bush, you were around <laughs> in Turkey. <laughs> what were we doing in Turkey at 14? So, we went and holidays to Turkey when we, when we were 14, yeah. right? Myself, the old one, the cousin, and his mum. Uh, so, we went out there. And Sorry, now run that up again. Myself, my old one. Yes. My cousin, uh-huh. his mum. Sound. Right. So, so you're. Myself. <laughs> <laughs> so your auntie and your cousin. Yeah. Like, yeah, we auntie and cousin. We all went to our eyes. Everyone on board here now, like. Yeah, you know? it's just the way you put ah, it. Yeah, it was, it was like just the confusing. First, yeah, the way you put it first, it was very fast. Brandon, get his whiteboard there, man. Write this thing down. <laughs> yeah, get the jog. Get the jog. Let me sort this out. So we went out, right? Kenji, 14 year old, my cousin, 16 year old. We said this country is lawless. We want to get quad bikes. So we went on the quads. <laughs> we went to get quad bikes, oh. right? Who, who came up with this idea? Well, when, we did. At what point, like, I have my mother and her sister Maureen, and there's no <laughs> time in their lives that ever sat down and said, let's bring the young lads quad yeah, biking. Yeah, but we knew Fergal this. and Raymond, they love the no, quad bikes in no, Turkey. No, but listen to me now. We landed in Turkey, and I'm not joking, even as a 14-year-old, five minutes later, I realized this country's pretty lawless right now, like, right. you know what I mean? So we heard that there was quad bikes that you could rent, like, and fly around the place on. They were called quad safaris, okay. right? <laughs> I don't know why they were called safaris. I didn't see one what out of them. What age you again? 14 year old, yeah. right? I did the, and I, you were with your auntie and your cousin? Yeah, my cousin and his mom. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Who? What do you call her? cousin and his housemate. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, you're right. You got the, the quad safari. 14 year old, yeah. land up, right, to the quad bike. Mm. Your man who's running the Bucky Boo, let's call him for the purposes of this podcast. <laughs> yeah, lovely Arab Bucky name. Bucky Boo says, you look fair. Yeah, that's a Turkish name. <laughs> right. <laughs> Bucky Boo says, not good light you, Jabroni. You look fair young. What right? did he call you? Jabroni. What's right? that Turkish for young fella? I don't know what he called him. Yeah. He said, young fella, you look fair young. I said, that's because I am. Uh, I said, I want to drive a quad bike. He said, I don't know if you're able. I Next said, thing, after the ride, Mark had new hair and new teeth. <laughs> yeah, that's where everyone goes to get the hair and the teeth to. <laughs> there is flights yeah. full of Irish boys who head across the Sorry, now, hold on. Sorry, I, I, I you, you finish your quad bike story. How did you die? Listen to me now. Yeah. I said to him, please, if he don't, if he please really listen to me now and do you, right? <laughs> if you please. Right? He says to me, you look fair, you to be on the quad bike. I said, right, I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> right. So he said, okay, you can do the first half of the journey and let your little cousin do the le- next half of the journey. Mm-hmm. I was on the quad bike for, let's not do it in time, let's do it in... Uh, <laughs> Dartboards. I, I was about <laughs> doing the dartboards. How was, many dartboards were you on the I bike? I was only on the quad bike for about forty dartboards, right. and I veered, <laughs> I veered off onto a motorway. My old one doesn't know this. She'd hit the roof if she heard this. Your man stopped the whole safari. It was four hours long, and he decided you're not driving this anymore. Like, and he put, and I had to go on the back of it for four hours, holding on to it. Like I was someone's what do they call them? Their squeeze or whatever. Like a bure at the back of a bike <laughs> to me cousin. And a lot of Turkish lads look and go, geez, that Irish fella's a fine yoke on the back. Oh, wait. <laughs> how did he bring, how did, how did they bring your quad back? No. What he, happened in the dual carriage Oh, because we were only off. We were only just off. They were like, you're not going on that now. You're going on the back of this other yoke. And they brought it back. Yeah. 
But what happened? I in told the... you it was only forty dartboards gone. Like we were only down the road from the feckin' <laughs> thing. But you were on the motorway of some sort. Yeah, we were on the side of a road. This was not legit. Where I told you it was lawless. But what did you do when you got on the motorway? Did you turn around? Did you stop? What happened? I veered off onto it, and I was like, "Whoa, she's shaking it up now, lads." When she gets going, and your man at the front, right, Bucky Boo, we call. It. <laughs> we got Bucky it. Boo said, "No Toronto. way, right? Yeah. This fella." Is going to be using this quad bike and he took me off it and he put me on the back of it like one of the birds with the hat pants hanging on to the back of my cousin's bike. And four hours. They had the whole road here at that four point. Four hours we had to do, right? We stopped. The highlight of my journey because I couldn't drive a quad I was 14 and all I wanted to do was quite a quad bike. The highlight of my journey is that in the middle of the jungle in fucking Turkey, we landed at a shop. It wasn't a shop. It was underneath a tree and your man gave me a can of coke. That was the best. That was this. That's the only crack I could knock out of the whole thing. Well, at least get a can of coke out of this. No in I better Turkey. fucking, I better hop back there's onto no me. There's no jungles in Turkey. Whatever it was, it was the forest. There's no jungles. Yeah, and then I have to hop back onto me fucking boyfriend's bike again at the back and take off. <laughs> Were you wearing a nice little pair of shorts? Huh? I was, it was Turkey, it was roasted. I wonder, <laughs> like, guaranteed, I didn't even realise this as 14, but guaranteed, like, I had, they were like half, it was like right up the arse, man. And I found out you still had that tuckers. 100%, the, yeah, there was oh. people on the fucking overpass going, gee, see the Irishman on the bike, and he has some young one on the back, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> but can I ask you, while all this was happening, was your mother and her sister they on were, another quad? They were eating uh, fucking um, eggs Benedict by the pool. <laughs> Okay. They were nowhere to be seen. They weren't on a quad. My mother was in her 60s. How long has she been in her 60s? Wait, she's been in her 60s for about 12 <laughs> years. <laughs> My old one was in her 50s at time. She wasn't going to be on a quad bike, man. Yeah, she didn't even drive a car. You weren't calling her your young one. <laughs> no, I was your man's young one. I was the young one at the time. <laughs> that was the first time I thought I was going to die in Turkey. Okay. What was the second time? The second time I thought I was going to die in Turkey was when um, a gentleman with a mullet asked me, could I have your phone? In Turkish. And the reason I knew was because he said, can I have your phone? <laughs> I said, no, no. And then he started frothing. <laughs> like that, right? <laughs> and I said, uh, Jody, come here. Listen, who, who? I think we better run to my cousin. Oh, yeah. I said, it's probably a good thing if we just run now. And we got <laughs> chased by two Turkish boys mm. up the road mm. and they had to run into the apartments. I thought I was going to die. I think I hooked my mam and everything when I got in. I was like, I think I was going to die, ma'am. I nearly died twice in Turkey is the moral story. How long were you in Turkey? Uh, that was about two hours in. The rest of it was grand, like, you know what I mean? And is that where you got the tremendous hairline from? What? No, this ain't no <laughs> fake hairline. Those teeth are fucking very white. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> They're definitely not. Teeth. But I actually would do that, though. I give out about young ones going and fixing themselves up and stuff like that. But I would get the fecal done in Turkey, no bother. There's a gang of us thinking about going out doing a bit. What do we all think about getting done? I you can't have a very good friend that. who got his teeth did. What? He got I have the teeth did. friend who got his teeth did. And? And before he went out, he said he wanted to look like Simon McCall coming back. <laughs> <laughs> And he did like it. It's look good. I look fast. Much, yeah. much, much, much. I'll now. tell you. I want to say seven. 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 Mm. Oh, lads, we better wrap this up. I anyway. want a yeah. tail. You want to what? A tail. <laughs> you want a tail. <laughs> you already have one, man. If you took that, your kid. I can't. Right. I can't believe. <laughs> I can't. Believe. That's an awful image. What? I can't believe you were in Turkey in thirteen or fourteen. I went twice, like to Turkey. But yeah. whose idea was it? I'm still befuddled at it. Ah, but because Spain got boring for the old one. I didn't say, "Ma'am, I want to go to Turkey and, and go on a quad bike." Like that wasn't like a fucking make a wish thing. Like she right. was like, "Come on, we go to Turkey." I said, "That's different than Spain. Let's go." Like. Let's go. Yeah. So you, yeah, okay. With you was Sorry, called. It's, it's just... probably gorgeous now, by the way. The <laughs> other thing, and I'll leave you with this one now. The other thing, if you're going to Turkey, it's actually gorgeous country, and it's I think it's country. Yeah, and I think it's more kind of you know like touristy now than it was. We hit it with just when Turkey was coming big. I think anyway. I don't know. I've been mm. there so long. The one thing that annoyed the tits out of me in Turkey, <laughs> right, is fellas outside restaurants saying, hello, you come in, you come in, you come in, you come into my thing, right? And what used to happen was the English and the Irish eventually used to have the crack with them and say, you know, call your man, you come in, bastard, bastard, you come in, right? And that's all good and well making those jokes until you're walking by a Turkish restaurant as a 14-year-old child and someone says, ugly fucker, ugly fucker, <laughs> you get in, because they don't know that's what it means, like. They're saying, oh, oh. If, you, if you want to get an Irish person, I you know, think, you, I think you call they, them I this. I think they what it meant. <laughs> I think they knew what it meant, I man. Did, I don't, you I don't call that? hate to break you, but you're... Yeah. Jesus, you're not exactly an oil painting. <laughs> I'm only a three days in that now. Yeah. That was no, episode like 118, ladies 118, and gentlemen. 118, <laughs> Derek, thanks very much for joining us. Thanks, ah, thanks for having me on.
And uh, we might have you again, sure, why not? Yeah. Thanks to Brendan, ladies and gentlemen, on thank the cameras. Thanks. And thank you to the Blind Tiger, Tiger for the wonderful drinks. And also, I ate an Anderson's today. And yes. it, uh, it was on. Believable. What you, you got the halal meat tacos? Halal meat tacos. Yeah, halal meat. Vegetarian. The what? Which I hear the halal meat. <laughs> he got the halal meat tacos. The tacos. They allow me to talk to tacos. And yeah, they are the finest vegetarian meal I've eaten in my life. Yeah, right. And uh, I had a oh. pulled beef uh, chips. He pulled the beef. Woo! I have it a complaint about unreal. them. Unreal. Oh, look, great! Oh, man, I yeah. can't wait to give back the money. Yeah, shoot yourself in the foot. Can't wait to give back the money. Yeah. Go on, Rick. I just yeah. uh, just a little request. Go on. Right. I just I got the calamari one of the nights. Right. I could do with a few extra calamaris. I, I just believe, felt it was. I, can't believe I just felt there wasn't enough calamaris in it. Imagine them. biting the hand that feeds you. <laughs> because they were so nice, like you just wanted more. They were delicious, but there was only about six or eight of them in the box, and I probably could do with twenty-four. <laughs> but maybe that's what they need. They need to have different sizes of calamaris. You know, like you get the nuggets. You get six nuggets, twelve nuggets, You've been nuggets, fighting for the nuggets. plus size man all <laughs> evening. <laughs> 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 I just want. To, I want an option of more calamaris. Anyway. That's episode 118, lads. Let's leave it at that. Derek, thank you so much. Fair play to you, boy. Thank you very much. Raymond, fair play to me. Fair play to me. Fair play to me. Sorry. Good luck. Good luck. Take care. (laughs) The Kendi and Rabo Podcast, sponsored by Anderson's Tremendous Event Centre and Wonderful Food Items, and the Blind Tiger's Marvellous Alcoholic Fruit Drinks.